Hey guys, it's uh, Rietvers here at the Stuttgart airport uh, and uh, yeah, just coming to, back home from uh, Grand Care Open. The, the tournament finished uh, yesterday. And uh, yeah, so just uh, this, this video is just a short recap of what happened in the last two rounds in the tournament. And uh, just to conclude this, uh, I would say pretty interesting trip. So, well, what happened yesterday was that in round one I was paired against a grandmaster from Ukraine and uh, we played a very, very interesting game, uh, which uh, ended in a draw eventually, but uh, during the game uh, it, it actually could have gone uh, either way. I could have won, I could have lost and uh, eventually it ended in a draw. So, so uh, yeah, very, very interesting game. Um, it was, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we ended up playing like five hours and uh, yeah, I was in trouble, uh, in time trouble actually for most of the game because after already 25 moves, I had left only eight, nine minutes on the clock without no uh, incre increment per move. So I had to make the last 15 moves in like eight minutes uh, before get, getting uh, additional half an hour after move 40. So that was pretty tough. But uh, I survived the time trouble. But then what was actually a little bit of a... <coughs> I'm sorry, a little bit of a funny incident was that then uh, in the end of the game, when I was again in time trouble, I had left three minutes on the clock and my opponent had uh, just a minute left. I thought that uh, since I had been all the time down on time, like my opponent was half an hour ahead of the time most of the, most of the game, I thought that my opponent uh, still has half an hour on the top of this one minute that's on the clock. So when, when my opponent flags, I thought that uh, he gets uh, another 30 minutes. So, but in reality, of course, I just didn't realize that when I got my half an hour, he also got uh, added half an hour to his time. So, yeah, and in the end, the position was like that uh, only, it was only me who could have played on, uh, uh, on winning. And I, I knew that, but uh, then I had only three minutes left on the clock. So I thought that, okay, my opponent offered a draw and I thought, okay, three minutes against half an hour. Obviously, I don't stand a chance to win the game. Um, but uh, in reality, it was three minutes against one minute where I could have easily played and both uh, on the position and on time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just <laughs> some sort of... But I mean, it was it was a big blunder in terms of like I just didn't realize that uh, he got this uh, half uh, half an hour when I got so pff, yeah a funny accident never happened that before to me but uh, from now on I'll know. Um, then after round eight, uh, uh, I went uh, together with Nikita Meshko, international master from Latvia, for lunch for a really quick lunch because the next round was about to start in like less than an hour. So uh, yeah. Uh, during lunch I realized, uh, of course, that what I've done, that uh, my opponent didn't have a half an hour more on time, so I could have continued playing, so that was a little bit, uh, yeah, it was a little bit uh, disappointing that I didn't realize that during the game. Um, but then, uh, then I was scheduled to play uh, in round 9 uh, another 2400 player. And again with black pieces of both round eight and nine with black pieces and uh, while i didn't have time to prepare my opponent actually came prepared for the game so he actually uh yeah we, he played a variation that i had two other games in this tr tournament uh so he was quite ready but funny funnily enough after the game he said that he didn't like what he got out of his preparation so so yeah, that was pretty cool that like a 2400 guy was for, was ready to play the opening that I play and then uh, still didn't get an outcome that he wanted. So I guess uh, my opening uh, repertoire isn't, isn't that bad after all. So uh, yeah, opening was pretty good, but uh, the thing was that if I wanted to score uh, the, uh, my second I am norm, I had to win the game. So I was, yeah, and yeah, I wasn't sure. I was thinking, okay, I should try and push for a win, which I tried in the beginning, but then I realized I didn't really see how to proceed. I couldn't find the right plan. So that was an issue. And uh, and then at some point I uh, tried to repeat the position three times just to yeah, basically offer the draw and 
and my opponent declined because at that point already my position wasn't all that good. So, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, again, we played for uh, five hours, so um, we basically, yeah, the thing is that in this tournament there was no increment uh, for moves, so uh, you could actually try and flag your opponent. Um, and uh, in the end of the game we had both left, I think it was a little over a minute on the clock. And uh, after uh, sitting in a completely lost rook ending without uh, two pawns uh, and just uh, <laughs> creating some, uh, some uh, incredible fortresses so that my opponent had very big issues to actually capitalize on this endgame, uh, I ended up in a ending with uh, my opponent having a queen and I had a rook and two pawns. And the funny thing was that during the game I thought, I didn't realize that there is a very simple fortress to build and uh, make a draw. Uh, and I actually realized it just today on the way to the airport that even though I looked at the game yesterday very very briefly obviously just typed it into my computer. And today I realized that, Jesus, that was such a simple draw. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe it was just tiredness that uh, after 10 hours straight, uh, very, two very tough games against very strong opponents, I just uh, didn't pull myself together and find this last idea. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. And in the end of the day, I think I gained uh, somewhere around 18, 19 rating points in the tournament, so that was pretty good. And uh, I have accomplished one of my goals to cross the 2300 uh, rating line and get my FIDE Master title. So, congrats to me on that. Uh, but on top of that, uh, what I would like to say that I, uh, while I scored only 5 points out of 9, um, I, uh, I still think I showed a really good play I and played against some grandmasters and international masters pretty much on equal so uh, the only game that I lost uh, without any chances was against an international master from Switzerland who was about to get his uh, grandmaster uh, title and so on so yeah I, to him I lost with I played really badly and uh, he played really good chess so didn't have any chances but other than that I put up some really good fights and all games could have gone either way so I actually feel that the result was worse than uh, than uh, I could have. Like it could have been looked at, looking at the game. So obviously I just uh, I did make some cr uh, mistakes in critical moments. So and even uh, even due to that, even uh, with having that in mind, I, uh, I scored some uh, rating points and actually had a pretty good result. So it's all good, and I feel pretty good about uh, my game and so on. So. And uh, as uh, talking to uh, with uh, Nikita Mishko, uh, my friend, the international master from Latvia, uh, I realized that yeah, I mean, if I want to get better, just it's all about just putting in the work, and uh, and the results are gonna come. So yeah, I mean, that's that's about it. And uh, all the games, of course, analyzed will come soon uh, <coughs> on my blog. Uh, on chess.com so you'll see yourself <laughs> what uh, what have I done in the tournament and how uh, things went so uh, I'm about to board the plane now in two hours so I'll just enjoy the sunshine here in uh, in Stuttgart airport and uh, see you soon bye